Welcome to Kids Considered, where two pediatricians discuss children's health topics of interest to parents in a podcast with new subjects considered every episode. I'm Dr. Lena Rothstein. And I'm Dr. Dean Blumberg. And we're both pediatricians at UC Davis Children's Hospital in Sacramento, California. And that leads us to today's topic. Hi, my name is Sharon, and I'm a mother of two boys and a girl. And we have an upcoming trip to Hawaii. I know the flight is relatively long, and I'm nervous about flying with the little ones because I know they will get fussy. Is there anything I can do to make things go smoother? Thank you. This will not only help me, but the other passengers on the plane. You know what, Sharon? Such a good question about traveling and one that has so much information Mm -hmm. that we're actually going to do two parts this time. Right, because we'll cover some of these issues in the first part about how to prepare to plan to travel with children to make it smoother, as Sharon mentioned. Right, and then stay tuned for part two with some more details about how to really optimize your vacation with your kids. Right, while traveling. Right. But before we talk about some strategies to make it easier to travel with young children, let's talk about the benefits of travel. Yes, because there's lots of benefits. Some people travel to visit family in other states or countries. Which is great for everyone. Right. Extended family wants to see your kids. And the child can be closer to their grandparents or aunt, uncles, or cousins. It can reinforce essential relationships that last a lifetime. And there's also travel for pleasure vacations. And this can be enlightening and provide eye-opening experiences. Not only for the parents, but also for the children. No matter what their age. And seeing different perspectives that traveling to different cultures, different countries or different states, can be invaluable in nurturing a sense of understanding and empathy. And don't forget new food, sights, and experiences. And all the family time. Yeah, so I feel like planning a vacation (laughs) right now. All right. Hold on. Remember how we got started on this? Yeah. So there's the challenge of traveling with children. Right. It's overwhelming. And really the unpredictable schedules. There's always the potential of traffic or flight delays. Infinitely long packing lists. You've got to be prepared for that. And because we don't want to deal with cranky kids along with the inevitable stress of even routine travel. Right. So let's talk about some common sense strategies parents use when traveling with children. So families can visit others and see the world. And create a lifetime of memories along the way. Which is the point of travel, right? Right. So let's start with making sure that kids will have fun when they're traveling. Making sure they're engaged. And of course, this depends on the age of the child. Because obviously babies will have different needs than toddlers or teenagers. Exactly. So do some research about your destination. Find some kid-friendly activities. That are age-appropriate for your children and their interests. So let's do this age-related. Let's talk at the beginning. Talk about traveling with infants first. All right, starting at the beginning. In a lot of ways, traveling with children less than a year or two of age is easy. Right. They're portable. You can take them with you. Yeah, you can take them anywhere and they'll be happy as long as you create a comfortable environment for them. And keep them on their routine. And that reminds me how often that we've talked about the importance of routine for young children. Right. We've mentioned in episodes discussing tantrums, sleep, divorce, and brushing teeth, the importance of routines. Really, we can't emphasize working on maintaining a routine enough at this age. Right. Schedules are very important for infants. And in particular, pay attention to their schedule for eating and sleeping. And stay as close to this as you can while on vacation. Plan your days around this schedule. Another aspect of maintaining routine is having some familiar touchstones along with the new experiences and environments that travel exposes us to. So bring along your infant's favorite toys, bottles, books... One pitfall you don't want to fall into is having the baby in a stroller or carrier all the time while you're on vacation. Make sure they have a chance to stretch on a mat or roll around. Yeah, you want them to get their tummy time in. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So let's move on and talk about toddlers. Okay. Many people are particularly afraid in traveling with this age group. (laughs) Right, because they worry about tantrums. Which is perfectly reasonable to worry about. But toddlers are at a fun age to travel because they take so much in. Right, and they're engaging with all of the sights and sounds and people that they're seeing. They enjoy exploring new experiences. But they can also be very easily overwhelmed. And that's really what can lead to the dreaded tantrum. Right, which is no fun for anyone. And it's not fun for the toddler. It's definitely not fun for the parents. And so to prevent meltdowns, leave plenty of downtime. Do not overschedule them. And let them release their energy in a playground or the hotel pool. 
Right. You can look for local parks near your hotel or relative's house, wherever you're staying. And this allows them to run around in an open space at their own pace. Or also you just could let them recharge with a nap. Mm -hmm. Shall we move on to school-age children? So kids at this age, kids are old enough to get involved in planning aspects of the trip. Even in a small way. Yeah, I was not recommending that you're going to give them the credit card and have them book the Airbnb and the hotel fare. Yeah, I think I think I knew that. Yeah, We were talking about empowering kids to make some decisions about the trip. Mm -hmm. So let them pick what they're interested in doing. But make sure to give them some structure. So that it's not too open-ended with no direction. Nope, best to give them some choices. So maybe there are several walking tours. And they could choose which one to take. Or you're going to a trip um, like at a, at a lake or the beach. Right, and you could say we could go swimming or we could go hiking or fishing or kayaking and let them choose one. Right, and then they're involved in it. That's great. So how about... What I think is the most challenging age group, which are the teenagers. Yeah, this can be a really challenging age. Because they're moody and they don't want to do anything that their parents want to do. Yeah, so parents worry about that and that they're going to withdraw while they're traveling. Right. So, again, this is a big group that I would say you need to have them have a stake in the trip. Right. right. So they can choose some sites that they want to see. Or a very special restaurant to go to. Or a particular tour. They could even take over their itinerary and plan their own one to two days of your trip. Mm -hmm. So another option is to let them explore on their own for a few hours. Right. This would be depending on the destination, of course. I remember I went to, I think, Italy with my dad when I was 16, and he let me go off for an afternoon, and I thought that was so cool. Uh -huh. And so that can change it for your teenager if you feel, if you trust them enough to do this and you're in a safe environment always. Right, because that's the, we, want, we want to make sure that they're safe. Some teens might prefer to be with their friends rather than their family on a trip. Right. So if you have the resources, another option is to invite one of their friends along for the trip. Right. That might make it more bearable for all of you. For everybody. Right. <laughs> so let's talk about families choosing where to travel. Like whether they should visit their in-laws or grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that uh, we need to get that intimately involved with choosing who they're going to visit. Okay, well, that but makes sense. How about different destinations? Of course. So beach vacations are awesome choices for the whole family. Really, they work for all ages. For young families with infants and toddlers, they can get ma maximum flexibility by getting a condo at the beach. Mm -hmm. And if they get a condo that if it's at the beach, they can return to their base for naps or for meals. Right. Cruises can be great for school age children and teens. Because they have a lot of activities on board. And they can be fairly independent in these situations. Some families like to go to theme parks. These might work better for families that have kids between the ages of 3 and 12. But hey, Every family is different. <laughs> right. Children younger than three tend to have a lot of limitations on the rides that they can go on. Yeah, and then as they get older, they become a little less interested. That teen moodiness kicks in that we talked about. Mm -hmm. like, why would I want to go to Disneyland? Right, although a lot of parents like to go yeah, to Disneyland. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. That's true. I, I love Disneyland. Fun for all ages. <laughs> so ask the older kids where they want to go to. <laughs> exactly. This will make the trip more memorable for them. And if you have the resources, consider international travel. But do not forget passports for children. I will say, do you know where um, Tom is right now? No, where? At the passport office in San Francisco, <laughs> because we are leaving for an international trip in one week. And he uh, didn't have he, a passport. He, <laughs> his passport's expired. Oh so do not be like me. Don't forget your passports for your kids. They need them. Yeah. So they'll need them. They need them to travel internationally. Even infants. So um, you can go to the U.S. Department of State website to find out more. And definitely plan ahead. Because new, <laughs> new applications and renewals for children under 16 need to be done in person. And obviously, this can take some time, a whole afternoon. <laughs> right. From experience. <laughs> right. The voice of experience. And then really, you know, double check the expiration date of your own passport because you don't want to be caught with an expired passport. Yeah. So let's talk about air travel with children. I think this is really um, intimidating to parents. It is. When planning air travel with children, you want to make it as convenient as possible. So this comes with a warning because this is going to cost more. Right. You may want to get nonstop flights if possible, or at least minimize the connections you make. Right. Because the last thing you need is to be trying to make a connection at an unfamiliar airport with a toddler who's crying and screaming. 
Right. Although sometimes other families might want to break that trip up if it is a really long flight. Right. So it may be very difficult for a squirming child to tolerate a 10 or 12 hour flight. So in that case, maybe you want the layover. Mm -hmm. And then you need to balance the length of the layover. Long enough for kids to walk and stretch and burn off some energy. And long enough so that you're not stressed making the connection. But not so long that it's increasing your travel time and making it more stressful. So you may want to consider flying as early in the day as possible. This reduces the chance of delayed flights or misconnections. And plus, once you're settled on the plane on these early flights, everyone usually just wants to nap. Right, including your kids. Right, which is perfect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One more thing when planning the flights and itinerary. Mm -hmm. Although you might want to take full advantage of your time off, don't cut it too close. What do you mean by that? So you might think about having a day or two before leaving to pack and get things in order around the house. Mm, and maybe a couple days when you return home. Right, so you can unpack and adjust. I see, before returning to work or kids to school. I am not, I'm not good at doing this. I like to maximize my vacation <laughs> right, well, front to back. But I may be different when I have kids. All right, something to think about. <laughs> So before you leave, make sure that your children understand what to expect with the whole travel experience. Right. That's important. You want to talk to them about everything you can think of. So from what time you'll be waking up the day of departure. To driving to the airport. And then you park the car. And maybe you're going to ride a bus to the terminal. And then you're checking the luggage. And going through security. And that's a big one. Right. Make sure they know all the items that need to go through the x-ray machine. Even their favorite toy so that they don't cry when their toy goes in the x-ray machine, right? And what it might be like to board the plane. And that they need to stay seated during takeoff and landing. And then what to expect when they arrive at their destination. And we could go on and on. I think we've... We've already gone on too much already. <laughs> okay, so now the flight is planned and the family gets to the airport. And the kids are prepared because they've talked about what to expect. So what can the parents do to make the airport experience easier? You could take advantage of curbside check-in. Mm -hmm. And then you won't have to be carrying all the luggage and other baby gear. Right, and then you can focus on the kids. Mm -hmm. And for older kids, wearing shoes that are slip-ons, that saves time at security. Right, avoiding laces is great. And then when boarding the plane? There is a pre-board option for families with young children, so you can take advantage of that. And that makes it easier. It seems like almost every episode we talk about breastfeeding. All about the benefits of breast milk. But storing breast milk can be an issue. Right, and you really don't think about having to bring it through security at the airport. Right. Remember that breast milk for infants or toddlers, that's allowed by the uh, security if it's in reasonable quantities. So you need to remove any pumped breast milk from your carry-on bag to be screened separately. And be sure to inform the TSA officer at the beginning of the screening process that you are carrying breast milk more than 3.4 ounces in your carry-on. And this is typically screened by x-ray. And the officers may need to test liquids and they may ask you to open the container or have you transfer a small quantity of the breast milk to a separate empty container. Just let the officer know if you don't want the breast milk to be x-rayed or opened. They can sometimes take alternative steps um, to clear it with extra screening procedures. But just so parents know, it is okay for the breast milk to go through x-ray. It won't harm the milk in any way. Right. And it does not need to fit within a quart-sized bag. If you're using ice packs or freezer packs or any of the frozen gel used to store and cool the breast milk, that's totally allowed. And for formula or juice, the same considerations apply as we just talked about with breast milk. Right. And make sure you bring extra breast milk or formula in case of delay. But I mean, I don't want to forget that we actually can just breast feed our infants and toddlers easily at the airport, too, directly at the breast. Mm -hmm. And you found some nice resources for that. Right. So many airports have designated pumping or breastfeeding rooms, although I'm a proponent of just breastfeed wherever and whenever you want. Some moms might be more comfortable in these rooms, and some of them are quite nice, actually. Mm -hmm. So we'll post a link um, on our website. I think it was called Mama Board about for traveling moms that kind of lists all of the major airports and where they can find these specifically pumping and breastfeeding rooms. And there's an app for that, right? There is an app for that, too. So we'll post a link to that. So I think we'll end this episode right there. We've covered about half of the things that we want to talk about, and we'll have to continue this discussion um, about how to enjoy travel with kids in our next episode. So tune in. Tune in and look forward to how to eat when we're traveling, how to schedule our time appropriately, um, and a lot of other great tips. 
Yeah, so we thank um, Amy Zide at the UC Davis Child Life and Creative Arts Therapy Department at UC Davis Children's Hospital for reviewing today's topic, although Dr. Lena and I take responsibility for any errors or misinformation. And um, before we finish, um, I need to do a little bit of a travel joke, okay? All right, let's hear it. Okay, so why did the librarian get kicked off the plane? Ooh, I don't know. Why? Because it was overbooked. (laughs) (laughs) That wraps up this episode of Kids Considered. You can find more information on our website, kidsconsidered.ucdavis.edu. Follow us on Twitter at Kids Considered. And Instagram at Kids Considered. If you have feedback on this show or topics you would like us to discuss in the future, we would love to hear from you. Please call us. Our number is 916-915-3388. Or email us at kidsconsidered at gmail.com. Please rate us on iTunes or wherever you subscribe to your podcasts. Thank you for listening, and we hope you will join us for our next podcast. Kids Considered is sponsored by UC Davis Children's Hospital.